The House of Representatives recently voted to lower the cost of insulin by setting a price cap. Now, thankfully, it passed 232 to 193, but this should have been a unanimous vote. Who were the 193 people who voted against lowering the cost of insulin? It feels like this is a no-brainer. And if you don't think that the cost of insulin should be lowered, you're just cruel. People need this medication to save their lives. Without it, they die. So who's against this? Well, the answer is Republicans. Republicans are against this. All but 12 voted against lowering the cost of of insulin, proving once again how cruel and cartoonishly evil they are, not even trying to pretend as if they care about normal Americans. And they've shown time and again how morally defective they are. The sole purpose of this party is to induce harm, harm on you, harm on minorities, harm on people who are already suffering. And they don't just not care about people who are suffering, they laugh as they do evil things like this. The party is just awful. So the question is, if you know how morally defective they are, why do you keep voting for this party? I mean, the Republican Party, they could literally start doing child sacrifices on the streets and there would still be people who justify voting for them by saying, yeah, well, I mean, the Democratic Party, they've got a little bit too woke and maybe gay people and marginalized people, people of color asking for too many rights. There's like two Democrats who support defunding the police and I really don't like that. So I had to vote for this party who's doing child sacrifice. I mean, I'm being hyperbolic here, but is there no limit to how cruel this party can become to where you just stop supporting them? I mean, if you have a member of your family who relies on insulin to survive, then don't you think they're going to feel upset that this happened? I mean, I get that you can't control every single thing that your representative does after you vote for them, but the Republican Party by and large has demonstrated time and again how evil they are. They are just evil. They like to inflict pain and suffering on Americans. So why would you support them? I just, I don't understand at this point. Now, we heard from Matt Gates. So he is one of the individuals to vote against this. He does not believe that this life-saving drug should have its price capped. And he tried to explain his justification here. And um, he had no good reason. But yet, simultaneously, as he explains why Big Pharma should continue to rip people off... He claims, oh, I'm still fighting Big Pharma, just not on this front. So as Stephanie Mensimer of Mother Jones explains, among those voting no was Representative Matt Gates, the GOP's leading troll who has come up with perhaps one of the most offensive justifications for GOP opposition to the popular bill. In his newsletter Friday, Gates told his constituents that he opposed the bill because fat people, not Big Pharma, are responsible for driving up the cost of insulin. He suggested that type 2 diabetes, which is often linked to obesity, could be cured if only people would work out more and lose weight, at which point they wouldn't need insulin anymore and the drug costs would fall without government intervention. Gates wrote, while Democrat posturing of H.R. 6833 victimizes insulin payees as people with an uncontrollable disease that are being taken advantage of and need Big Brother to throw them a raft, lifestyle changes in mass would expeditiously lower demand and the subsequent prices of insulin. 90 to 95 percent of people with diabetes have type 2 diabetes, which can be prevented or delayed with healthy lifestyles, such as losing weight, eating healthy food, and being active. Arbitrary price controls are no substitute for individual weight control. Since 2000, the number of diabetes cases in the United States has nearly doubled. The demand for insulin has increased and the requisite price increase has followed suit. In other words, the price of insulin increases as waistlines increase. More than a quarter of Florida residents are obese, including Gates' favorite Palm Beach resident, former President Donald Trump. And more than 10% of the state's population suffers from diabetes. Not all of which is caused by lifestyle factors. Gates's attempt to sympathize with them was probably not very convincing. While I empathize with all Americans suffering from disease and will continue to fight Big Pharma, that's a joke, I voted against H.R. 6833, he wrote. I will not see a reemergence of FDR price controls and join Democrats in their attempt to pave the road to serfdom. Wow. So in other words, if you rely on insulin to survive, odds are it's because you're a beast. So uh, if you can't afford it, die. That's what he's saying here. He's saying this to a lot of his own constituents. Does it get any more cruel than that? Does it get any more cruel than that? My nephew relies on insulin. He's not overweight. Not everyone relies on insulin because 
They have diabetes of their own making. And even if that were the case, do you honestly believe that because somebody made poor lifestyle choices, they deserve to die if they can't afford medication? Is that honestly what you're saying? And the answer is yes, that's what he's saying. If you can't afford it, well, too bad. Should have been skinny. What a monster this man is. And in the same breath, he says, well, you know, I'm still going to fight Big Pharma, don't you worry, but I'm just going to let them rip you off when it comes to insulin. Unreal. Now, let's look at the cost of insulin in the United States compared to what other countries pay. So this chart is a little bit dated. It's from 2018, but still it shows that we pay over six times more than the second highest pair of insulin six times more. And regardless of why people need insulin, public opinion polls show that Americans overwhelmingly support capping the cost of insulin, including 82% of Republicans who either strongly or somewhat support capping the cost of insulin to $35 per month. But Matt Gates and 92 other Republicans say, no, we disagree. Okay, well, I mean, they're, they're out in the open saying, we think that if you can't afford the cost of insulin, you should die. So the people, the 82% of Republicans who either somewhat or strongly support insulin having a, a cost cap, are you still going to vote for this monstrous party? I get if you don't like Democrats, okay? You're just going to be ideologically different than me. I don't like Democrats as well. I think that they're too conservative. But I mean, the differences here are pretty clear. And if you don't like Democrats, you don't have to vote affirmatively for Republicans because every time you cast a vote for Republicans, you are emboldening them in their fight to just make people suffer for no reason. He's he's saying here, you should suffer if you're obese. I just, how do you even justify this with the straight face he's saying this? If you're obese, sorry. Too bad, too sad. Should have been skinny. I just, how how can you rationalize this? How can you support this party of monsters and demons? Holy shit. Now, more details about why this is necessary and why most reasonable people supported this in Congress. On Thursday, the House passed a Democratic-sponsored bill to cap the cost of insulin at $35 a month for most Americans, an effort to crack down on price gouging by drug makers who have raised the price of a life-saving product used by millions of Americans by almost 500% in recent years. Some people now pay more than $1,000 a month for insulin to treat diabetes, even with insurance. Let that sink in. Even with insurance, some people are spending more than $1,000 per month and they don't have a choice. They can't just choose to not pay. You know, if you are going to a restaurant and they raise the prices or they change a menu, you can say, I'm not going to go there. But when it comes to a medication that is life-saving, you don't have the choice. You either pay or you die. And capping the cost of just one drug, I mean, we should be able to control all prices. We should be nationalizing pharmaceutical companies that continue to price gouge Americans. But just doing the bare minimum here, just an incrementalist approach to lowering the cost of this one drug, 193 Republicans, including Matt Gates, say, mm, no, fuck them, let them pay more. I just, I don't know how you support this morally defective party. So if you vote for Republicans consistently, they are showing you who they are. They're so cruel that they are against capping the cost of insulin. I mean, insulin should be free, right? But they don't even want to put a cap on the cost of this one drug. But yet, they're fighting Big Pharma. Don't you worry. No, they're fighting you. They're against you. They don't care if you die. They don't care how many Americans are suffering. They don't care how many Americans are sleeping on the streets. They're perverted. They almost get off on seeing people suffer. That's their whole ethos. So if you still support this party after they've shown you time and again that they don't give a flying fuck about you, then that says a lot about you as an individual as well. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.